Thank you. The next few minutes we will see some of the problems one may face during the learning curve. Uh, the first one is while preparing the tissue. So generally we try to uh, go for a little older tissue so that unscrolling will be easier for us in the learning time. But uh, these tissues can be very fragile and they can easily turn when uh, preparing the tissue, donor tissue. And uh, the advantage is like even if there is a small tag or tear or even uh, Dr. Fogla once in one of the talks mentioned about 80% of the tissue is there. Still, you can go ahead and uh, with the DMAC. Um, so, still, you can get good results. So, uh, if you get a small tire, don't get uh, discouraged and switch over. You can still try to use it if you have a, uh, at least a, re a decent uh, large graft. And next one okay. to prepare the recipient area, uh, we have to remember DMAC is a um, okay. little unforgiving. So, you should not have any tags in between while opposing the uh, donor okay, tissue to I'll the call. recipient I'll area. So here, uh, I learned like if you do it under air, you can see the margin very clearly. But if you are not able to do it, in some cases we can't do, if you do it under visco, wash it off and then put an air bubble and verify the margins are all around clear and there are no tags, we have to remove them. Then the donor tissue insertion already, we have seen few of these. We have to depressure de the anterior chamber before taking the cannula out, the cartridge out. If you don't do that, with the pressure, easily the donor tissue can come out. And then, uh, of course, luckily in this case, later it was again um, sorted out and again re-injected. Luckily, it escaped. But all the time, we will not be very um, uh, lucky like that. Then sometimes we may need a backup tissue also. Sometimes being too cautious also will be a problem. So, uh, especially like if you have a long uh, arm of the injector and you keep on checking it uh, without concentrating on the thing, suddenly it came out. So, that also is another problem. So, all these manipulations are going to reduce your endothelial count. So, we have to be uh, very careful in avoiding all these manipulations. And um, poor visualization as doc just now Dr. Fogla mentioned, sometimes if the uh, Staining is not good, or if the media is uh, the carne is too uh, hazy, then again we will have problem, as in this case. And uh, here you can see, like you can see vaguely a triangle of tissue, and uh, the surgeon try to after injecting try to unfurl. That's it. It has gone behind the pupil, and even to recognize that is very difficult in such a carnea, especially if the staining is poor. And then we may need additional. Uh, instruments like either intraoperative or maybe outsourced light where we need uh, to find it out. Then the scroll management is already mentioned by Dr. Fogla. Most of the my topic is already covered when, when they were uh, showing these things. A tight scroll, what I learned, we can use Fogla's cannula and go in if we are uh, very confident about the orientation, then we can go in and with a jet of fluid, we can unscroll and then uh, we can do it. And the same way we can, um, a large scroll, a, a large graft. Initially, like we tend to make very large grafts thinking like we are replacing large amount of endothelium. Then again, uh, this, they can get folded like a origami and then managing will be difficult. Uh, instead of that, like Dr. Basak shows, going for a peripheral uh, cut peripheral punch will, will give more endothelial cells. And then uh, the sticky tissue is a major problem. I don't have a video exactly to show what a mess it can be. But uh, whenever you get bleeding like this, always wait for the bleeding to completely stop and then go ahead and do the uh, tissue injection. And then again, Dr. Fogla mentioned this. This open edge we have to verify before uh, injecting, then only we can get the correct orientation in the anterior chamber. And a decent head graft, this is again another one I want to insist, like it is not like DSEC. Once uh, you feel, uh, you see a decent head graft, you can't just tap and bring it, it's, it's quite difficult. So again, sometimes we have to deflate uh, partially and uh, then slowly we have to bring it to the center. Uh, unlike the DSEC tissue, this is, a, uh, this is not easy to manipulate. 
and uh, sometimes a large pa can be a big problem and uh, this uh, this video i have shown previously also if you inject the air can go with the within the, through the pa posteriorly so that can be a big problem so nowadays i try to avoid a very small pa sometimes even there are reports that even without pa you can do cases the post operative complications in the initial period of course pupillary block glaucoma we have to keep in mind and it has to be released as soon as possible air bubble and also dislocation of the um, uh, graft which is also more common here and this uh, the asoct will be very helpful to make sure that it is correctly oriented and usually it will be more in uh, the first one week so during this one week keep on uh, assess the patient and even if a localized edema persist go and do an asoct find uh, any peripheral detachment and then address it immediately and primary graft failure also common in the learning period usually due to manipulation and also when you are switching over from normal cases to more complicated cases like ic and all then again we will get into trouble and we will have more manipulation and primary failure and graft rejection is we have to keep in mind very quite difficult to recognize in these cases not in not unlike in uh, pkp so here we have to be very careful even few new freshly appearing kps or ac cells should trigger a suspicion and then we have to treat it as graft rejection and graft infection luckily in our country we are not seeing more infection uh, compared to pk here because we prepare our tissues freshly but in uh, western countries where pre -pre prepared tissues are being distributed they feel that uh, their infection in ek is more than the pkp so this we have to keep in mind as we are slowly moving to tissue distribution system so in conclusion this is a very um elegant um, sur surgery with elegant results but the le learning curve is steep and we have to understand if you are a dissect surgeon when you are switching over this is a different surgery so we have to de learn something and we have to acquire new skills and we can't apply the same principles sometimes to manage the uh, issues here thank you thank you dr repti so again the question is open for all of the uh, all of our speakers so if you have any questions no questions oh yes oh is there more is there? mina oh mina so, is there yes so i have two questions and uh, one is while you were feeling the donor you i have been taught like we should do the scuba technique submerged in fluid but actually you didn't develop any tears even when you didn't have fluid it's question I, for you me yes. i never use scuba Good. technique okay. so because the, the, yeah. the uh, whatever i have understood scuba technique is taking long time whatever i had read earlier uh, i have never tried so sir, scuba kind of confuses you also because it's it's fluid so the it keeps you know it's not static there so you when you take it out you i have seen one uh, Uh, you, 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 you told we me. We do earlier. what you do, so we do the same way. We don't use scuba technique. Scuba, I have never. I, I just. No, I, I usually, I like to protect my endothelium. What you have shown, you, you are very fast, so you don't allow the endothelium to dry. But if you see one of the other people doing it, Ajay, if they, they take they longer, slow. you will have the endothelium drying up. And when you are doing that, so I think yeah. it's always better. that you it doesn't have to be done under floating and fluid mm -hmm. what the original scuba does mm -hmm. but at least keep a little so level of fluid uh, so, so that, that your that, that decimates think. remains moist when you are doing that and also if you keep a little bit of fluid you have easily you you can move the decimates much more easily rather than it getting folded and getting fixed folds so i think uh, sir even yours is not absolutely dry there's some yeah. no, no, film no, no. of fluid it is it is a fluid it never absolutely yeah. dry scuba technique was originally oh, in full full submerged i know full submerged so there the, even the sclera you had to hold so what you will see in his videos and my videos we never use a two handed technique we are not fixing the sclera when we are doing the peeling because when you do that you will not be able to assess the resistance so that's why the tissue is lying in the Uh, endothelial punch block and you are using one hand to peel without providing any counter traction so the moment you come and encounter a resistance you can see movement of the corneal scleral rim and you know that there is a abnormal additions so i think that's very important to see 
So isn't your second hand holding the squirrel? No. No, 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 no. Always remove the excess fluid from below the cornea scleral rim because if there's too much of fluid, it then works. the cornea will keep moving. So you first dry the base, put in your cornea scleral disc, and then you single-handedly do that. But don't try to hold and do that because if you hold and do that, you will definitely tear your tissue. Oh. So the second question was of centration of the uh, DMEC <coughs> tissue. Uh, sometimes I feel it uh, overlaps with the area of uh, stripping. Uh, so, Dr. Summer, you said that you are o you are oversizing the uh, host area by 0 0.5. Traditionally, 0 .5. we have been doing the same size. So, I just wanted to know. Same size for DMEC? No. Same size for DSEC, even smaller size for DSEC is okay. But DMEC, we, uh, I prefer 0 0.5 or maybe 0 0.0, depending upon the size of the cornea. Uh, so, 0 0.5 is... And you can actually see that when you are giving air bubble, you can see the margin and also DM edges, the torn DM edges. Usually if it's covered, if it crosses little like 5%, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But again, where is that gap? Is it in the lower part or it is in the upper part? Lower part, it matters because fluid start from there. Upper part, the air remains for a longer period of time. So patient see it's reclining, the upper part here stays there and it gives. But lower part, there may be, it is my thought, but donor detachment nowadays it is very, very less. I mean, it is less than 2% in my hand. I do not know, Rajesh. In, in, in my hands, it's still about 8%. 8? Eight? Yes. Maybe it's the kind of tight air fill that you do. 8% in the sense because I do more of complex cases. No, I so do a lot of complex yeah, cases. So these are all post tube straps, those kind what, of What I have understood, I am sharing during, we used to keep the patient overnight before COVID. When we used to send, see the patient next day, everything fine, fluid bubble, we send home. And during COVID, what happens? We stopped keeping the patient at night. So we send the patient home. And ask the patient to come on third day. First day detachment, second day detachment is not a... Basically, it doesn't happen. First post-op is useless, actually. You see only certain other things rather than donor detachment. But third day is very crucial because the air bubble is, say, 40% level or 30% level. And that time you actually see your detachment. So third day, then day seven fine so this no, is my when you, when you say detachment i mean don't mean complete detachment no no you no you get peripheral detachment which you observe and it settles down on your own no, but even then if you get a partial peripheral detachment these patients have to be followed up because they can progress and the detachments can increase but the rebubbling rate would be in the range of two percent three percent no yes, no my overall where you actually go and put in an air bubble but like really? i said that the centration of the dm graph sometimes may not be perfect. It will not exactly be in the bare area that you have put. I have learned that sometimes less is more. So if you have opened your graft and your graft is fairly covering the pupillary area, even if it is slightly decentered on one side and you're losing your stain, it's better to put an air bubble and complete the surgery there yes. than to try and detach and again try to move because what happens is by then the stain becomes lighter and often you realize that you end up in a more worse situation than what you started off with. So, so uh, there is a saying, do not try to be 100% perfect in DMAC surgery. Do not try to be 100% perfect in centration as we used to do in DSEC. So, little eccentric, let them. But if, it's, if it is too much eccentric, then you need to take a call and you need to. And I have some videos probably next time I send. How do you, what Rajesh, I have devised some instrument, you can, without, I mean, making the re-scroll again, you can actually ship the graph by various instrument. I have uh, three, four such kind of instrument, and I often do that. So, probably next time I will show.